Am I good? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So yeah, I also did mine on Admiral E. Sun Chin. I I don't speak Korean, so I'm gonna butcher all of this just to let you guys know. So I'm apologizing in advance. Um, anyway, I just found his life and his story and the things that he did in his life very interesting. So that's what I decided to write my paper on. Um, okay. So first, we're gonna talk about his early life. He was born in Seoul on April 28th, 1545. That's according to the solar cal calendar. In the lunar calendar, he was born in March. I can't remember the exact, exact date. Um, he was an ordinary, ordinary boy of a common family. Um, he had a strong Confucian background. At the age of eight, he moved to a remote village with his parents out of Seoul. They originally lived in Seoul. Um, his father was Ijeon. Is that how you say it? Ijeon. Yeah, and then his mother, I don't know how to say that, but that's her name. And then he had, uh, he was the third of four uh, brothers, and all of the brothers were named after, their parents named them after uh, uh, Chinese sages. Um, so that's the names, uh, I don't know how to pronounce them. In Chinese, you pronounce it, Hui Xin, Yo Xin, Xin. Um, let's see. And then uh, some characteristics of him that were kind of highlighted. By um, that he had were he was very filial um, towards his parents. Uh, he was very loyal to them. He was very dutiful. He was gentle natured, righteous. He never tolerated any kind of misconduct. Um, he was extremely loyal uh, to his parents and to his friends, and he was also courageous. Um, just part of his life, uh, he decided to become a soldier uh, rather than a scholar, even though the social norm at the time was to become a, a, a scholar. Um, that was what everybody did. That was what, you know, you made lots of money or you got a lot of prestige and power from doing so, from being a scholar. And so being a soldier wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, a popular thing to do. And that's what he chose. So I, I found that kind of interesting. Um, he was married at the age of 20. Uh, he married the daughter of the governor of, I don't know how to pronounce that, somebody say that. Uh, thank you. Uh, and then they had the first child when he was 23. Okay, um, and then this is just a quotation uh, that talks about him choosing to become a soldier rather than, uh, rather than a scholar. Um, he did, uh, he had complied to his parents' wishes up to this point, you know, all through his early life. He'd gone to school, he'd studied, you know, the classics, and become very well learned and, and things like that. Um, but it came to a point where he had to choose whether to be a soldier or, you know, go on and be a scholar or a, or a magistrate or something like that. But he chose to be a soldier. Um, can somebody be willing to read this quote? Yeah. It was quite exceptional for a man born in peacetime to make up his mind to be a man of sword rather than to be a man of letters. Having learned his intentions, his parents and his friends tried to persuade him to change his mind. Because they expected he would be more successful and prosperous if he would make good use of his knowledge of literature. But none of them succeeded in persuading him to change his mind. As a son of filial piety to his parents, he had never opposed their wishes, but this time he yielded to none. So him being very filial, I found it very interesting that like this time he decided to be, you know, he decided to choose the career path of being a soldier rather than being a scholar, although he could, probably could have, you know, uh, gotten a lot more wealth and power by being a scholar and a magistrate rather than becoming a soldier. So I thought it was very interesting that, that he chose this. But later on, you know, as she talked about the, Hideo, the Hideyoshi invasions, um, he had a huge, huge, huge impact on the outcome of those wars and what happened. And um, and because basically because of him, uh, uh, they were able to turn the tide of that war, and, and they weren't defeated. I guess you'd say. Um, so just going on with his life, um, in October 1566, he began to learn military arts on a full-time basis rather than just kind of doing it for fun. Uh, he learned military tactics on his own through books. So a lot of the stuff that he learned, he learned on his own. He just did by himself. Um, he took the exam to become a uh, junior officer in the military, but failed due to breaking his leg, like she said. And she, she, already, she already told you about the, uh, the awesome way in which he continued on with the exam. Um, but the, the exam only comes around every four years, and so he had to wait another four years to take it. Um, and so that's when he passed it. Um, 
Another thing that I found very interesting is that he never tried uh, to get promoted through corruption or the help of others. Um, like in the military, he never tried to, you know, to be dishonest and try to, to get gain, you know, and things like that. He was he was just kind of satisfied with what he had, and he was dis he was honest in all of his dealings, um, even though those around him were trying to do all that they could to to rise higher power, even if that meant it was through corruption and dishonesty. But he did not do that. Um, okay, M. G. Moore. Um, uh, how do you pronounce that? Korean. Thanks. Um, so Hideyoshi he invaded the Korean Peninsula in 1592, and the war lasted until 1598. Um, casualties on the Korean and Chinese side alone, because they were fighting together um, for parts of the war, was over a million. Um, people, um, and I just thought it was interesting. I looked up some uh, some casualties with U.S. wars, um, and it's I think it's very interesting that you have to add up several of these wars, several U.S. side of the casualties, um, to get even close to to what just the Korean side was on that war. So you can see what kind of war this was. It was you know a war of epic. Portions. There was tons of people involved, and tons of people were killed. You know, keep in mind that those millions, of, the million of people, was only the Korean side. It wasn't the Japanese side. Um, also, the Civil War was 750,000. That's both the Union and Confederate. So that was both sides. It wasn't just one side. So even in the Indian War, um, there was more casualties on one side than there was on the both sides in the Civil War. Okay. So, uh, just talking about the Indian War and what happened, um, up until the naval bat battles, Hideyoshi uh, had had his way with the Koreans. He started at the bottom of the Korean Peninsula and he just marched upwards. Uh, the Koreans tried to fight back, but they weren't prepared. Um, and they pretty much marched on up into Seoul without any resistance. And, you know, the king had fled by the time that they got there, so they took Seoul without almost any resistance. Um, Sun Sin uh, defeated, defeated the Japanese forces against all odds. Um, even though he was significantly, significantly outnumbered and out-resourced, um, he was able to outmaneuver the Japanese. And because of his heroics on the sea, uh, he was able to, him and his uh, the boats that were under his command were able to turn the tide of the war and help Korea um, survive. Um, also, she mentioned briefly Admiral Lee's death. Um, he was chasing after the Japanese main forces. A stray bullet hit him under the left armpit, and rather than have people come attend to him, he told them to keep fighting, to cover him up so that his soldiers wouldn't see, they wouldn't be panicked, and so also the Japanese would not get any sort of courage from seeing him wounded. They told him to just fight on, and, uh, and he did this in the presence of his nephew and his son. Um, he died November 19th, 1598, at the age of 54. Okay, I think the next slide, don't laugh at me, but I had to do this. I had to compare the two. <laughs> the two, I, whenever, I, when, uh, the more I read about Admiral E, I just think of Captain Moroni. You know, I think they, they're both similar. They both went to great lengths to prepare their people to, to go to battle. They both put the welfare of their country above their own. And they both, you know, did. They were both upstanding, both virtuous men that did a lot of good. And so, anyway, I just had to throw that in there. Okay. What'd you say? <laughs> Probably actually <absolutely> not. <laughs> um, and then I got all this information from a book. Uh, this book, I rented it from the library. Um, it's actually a really good book. Um, so if you want to learn more about him, I would definitely look into checking it out. It's actually a very engaging book. Um, it tells it more like a story. Um, but it's very historical and it tells you a lot of facts, but it's also very interesting. It's a good read. So I recommend it. Also, I got all those facts about the wars from Wikipedia. Anyway, that's it.